Yo, some of y'all are gonna be so mad at me after watching this video, but we gotta talk about it. Let's go. What's up, y'all? Terry Warfield. Hey, I hope you're having a good day so far. If this is the first time here, a big fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, you came back. Welcome back. Real quick, I gotta say thank you to everybody. We are almost at 13.8 thousand people in the family and the squad. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Let's keep this going. Yo. I told you at the beginning of this video that some of y'all are going to be mad after watching this video, but I, I got to be honest, right? Let me just cut to the chase. Let me just cut to the chase. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get to that, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, if you're into like camera gear, tutorials, editing tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, photography, reviews, stuff like that, and you want some sauce with that, you want some flavor, some personality, make sure you hit subscribe and please, please watch the whole video and drop a like while you add it. Now let's go ahead and get on to the meat and potatoes. The 24 millimeter G Master. I gotta be honest, it is one of my favorite lenses that I've ever owned. Y'all know, well some of y'all probably know, I just bought it like seven months ago and I was so freaking pumped to get that lens. So let me start off with the stuff that I love about the 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master, gangsta mode, whatever you want to call it. Let me tell you why I love that lens. First of all, it is so small and sharp and to be an f1.4 lens it is so freaking compact you can slap it on basically any camera and it'll be balanced you can put it on any gimbal as long as you're not putting it on like a freaking monster camera and still have a great lightweight setup the 24 millimeter g master f1.4 is probably one of the sharpest lenses i've ever used that is no lie no exaggeration and also it's weather seal, super fast autofocus. But my favorite thing about it, obviously, is the F1.4. Now, some people say it's not necessary. For me, I love having F1.4, especially on a wide lens, which is what makes the 24 millimeter G Master special. So typically, if you wanna get like a lot of separation, right? You wanna get that bokeh, that tona, as camera conspiracies calls it, you gotta punch into a longer focal range to get that that quote unquote compression to blow the background out, right? Well, on a wider lens, typically that's hard. However, when you combine a 24 millimeter with f1.4 and the sharpness of the sony 24 millimeter g master it is a magical combination to behold 24 millimeters at f1.4 is one of the most specialized looks out there and on top of that the lens is great with like astrophotography it's sharp corner to corner there's little distortion and on top of that it's only 1400 bucks which i'm saying only is still a lot of money but comparatively speaking only 1400 bucks so all of this good stuff that I'm talking about, you probably wondering, well, T, you said the title of this video was you sold that lens. Why the hell would you sell it if it's so good? Okay, I get it. Let me explain. Like I said, that is one of my favorite lenses I've ever owned. And it's even like better on a Sony crop sensor camera or like an a7 III in APS-C mode because you can get like a 35 millimeter equivalent. However, even with that, even with the 35 millimeter equivalent in like a crop mode or on a crop sensor camera, I found at times it still wasn't long enough. Now, I'm a Prime fan. I love Primes. I love how sharp they are. I love F1.4s, F1.8s. But let's keep a spade a spade, especially if you do like freelance work or if you're a content creator like me, right? Sometimes having to change lenses is a big hassle. Let me give you an example. So a few weeks ago, I did a photo shoot and the photo shoot was for like urban corporate style headshots, right? So some of those shots, I wanted them to be like environmental photos, right? Wide sprawling landscapes showing the backdrop of downtown Cleveland along with him in the photo. So for those photos, the 24 millimeter F1.4, it was freaking perfect. But when I wanted to get that tighter portrait look, I needed to use a 50 or 85, which not a big deal. Just change the freaking lens, right? Okay. So when I throw the 85 millimeter on there, I'm sitting here, boom, 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 snapping away, getting the looks. And then all of a sudden I see a look that I'm like, oh man, that would look extra dope 
as a wide angle portrait too. Guess what I had to do? Put the freaking G Master back on. And then once I got that shot, then going back to 85 again, just the back and forth is not good while you out on location because that means sensor dust, that means excess wear and tear on the mount of the lens and the mount of the camera, and even for YouTube stuff. So obviously 24 millimeters is a really good focal length for talk ahead stuff, which is why I love the G Master so much. Being able to use talk ahead stuff at 24 millimeters and at 1.4 blow the background out, I really love that look. And I know some of y'all don't like that look, but me personally, I love that look. However, Sometimes I don't want to change lenses if I'm doing talking head stuff and I want to go right into getting a b-roll shot Or what if I'm getting a b-roll shot and I want a wider look, but I also want to punch in that means I have to switch lenses You get where I'm going with this even though I love the 24 millimeter f1.4 For me the switching lenses constantly back and forth and y'all probably will say oh Terry needs to work on this workflow XYZ you right, but shut up so I'm tired of switching lenses. So, this is what happened. Enter the 24 to 70 F2.8 G Master. Yes, I did it. I got rid of the 24 millimeter G Master for a 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 G Master, which is a 2200 bucks, I might add, where the G Master is 1400 bucks. So, I actually found a guy locally. Well, I won't say found because I know him, and he had this lens, but he was the opposite. He was trying to go from this big, ridiculous, heavy lens, which we'll talk about in one second, back to something smaller and lighter for his camera because his camera was only for like live streaming. So he didn't need the versatility of having a zoom lens. Plus, he liked the way F1.4 looked at 24 millimeters. So he wanted to trade me straight up. And I'm like, bro, you, you want to trade straight up? You, you do realize this lens is a thousand dollars more expensive, right? But for him, it's something that he wanted. He didn't want to have to deal with the hassle of selling it, buying it. So I was able to get this straight up without coming out of pocket anything. So in my eyes, it's a straight win. Now let's talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of the 24 to 70 f 2.8. Let me just tell you right off the bat, this lens is freaking heavy. I'm talking about, I'm going from a tiny 24 millimeter f 1.4 to now having my primary lens be two freaking pounds this thing is built like a tank imagine vlogging with this which i have been doing holding this thing up why are you trying to vlog you want to talk about a shoulder workout and i work out all the time yo that's your shoulder workout the other thing about this lens that's a disadvantage compared to the 24 millimeter g master is f 2.8 now some of y'all might argue that that's not a big deal but it is two stops of light and at 24 millimeters f1.4 versus f2.8 is quite a difference when it comes to the depth of field behind you so it is a difference maybe it's not important to some of y'all but there is a difference for some people those would be deal breakers but what do you get going for 24 to 70 versus 24 millimeter prime at f1.8 well let's talk about this bad boy right here because i cannot believe how sharp this 24 to 70 f2.8 gangsta mode g master is it is like this is prime level sharp all the way throughout the focal range which i was very very surprised even though it's bigger heavier and i lose two stops of light having a lens where i can go from 24 to 70 with the turn of a barrel to me it covers all of those focal lengths that i use on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to content creation and you can still use 70 millimeter for portrait too so even if i'm just out and about i got 24 millimeters for my wide shot and then boom 70 millimeters at f 2.8 with a super sharp fast weather seal tank of a lens with the 24 to 70 f 2.8 gangsta mode one other thing i wanted to add the filter thread on the front of this bad boy is 82 millimeters versus the 67 millimeter with the 24 millimeter g master so that was something else 82 millimeter filters are more expensive and they're a lot bigger so that was another adjustment i had to make but all in all after i've gotten this um i haven't i haven't really taken it off my camera now you may wonder what i'm filming on right now since i sold the 24 millimeter g master well Right now I'm using a Sony a7S 3 and I have a Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 crop lens on it. And y'all probably thinking like, Terry, that doesn't even work. Well, I bet y'all ass to do, cause I'm doing it right now. So even though I got like a heavy vignette and all that stuff right now that I'm looking at, 
when you put it in post all you got to do is punch in a little bit it gets rid of the vignette and plus you still get 4k plus face detect eye detect all that stuff still works so that's the lens that i'm using to film this video but like i said since i have gotten this lens i have found it to be so sharp and versatile there's really not much reason for me to take it off so all in all i'm pretty happy with the swap if i had to do things different had i not been able to trade him straight up for this I think going for something like maybe the Sigma 24 to 70, which is about a thousand bucks cheaper for 98% of the performance that this offers, plus buying another 24 millimeter G Master, I still would have been at just about the same price as one of these. And that's something that I still may entertain going forward. I may sell this one and go with the Sigma 24 to 70, or maybe Tamron 28 to 75, plus the 24 millimeter G Master, or I'm also thinking about the 20 millimeter because the active stabilization mode on the a7s3 gives you a 10 percent crop so putting the 24 millimeter on there times 10 percent will get you like 26 27 putting the 20 on there will get you to like 22 23 which is way more appealing for vlogging and stuff like that but anyways let me know down in the comments if y'all think i'm a whack job for switching these two lenses out maybe you agree with me uh for me time will tell but i would love to hear y'all opinions in the comments go wild down there as a matter of fact i'm gonna be in there kicking it with y'all so till next time i am out about to go enjoy my 24 to 70 some more gangsta mode 2.8 G Master. I'm going to catch y'all later. Piece of chicken grease. I am out. Terry Warfield. Peace.